Good morning, everybody. Galatians chapter 4. Who in here has ever heard of um, St. Valentine's Day? Who in here has ever heard of St. Patrick's Day? Okay. St. Valentine's, St. Patrick. Where do, those, where do those dates come from? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. Huh? Close to it. Close to it. Back thousands of years ago, the people believed in more than one God. The poor uh, Hindu people have 330 million gods. Now how in the world do you pray forgiveness to 330 million gods? How in the world do you pay a sac uh, give a sacrifice to 330 million gods? It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, but that's what they believe. So in the old days, the people believed that there were multiple gods and that those gods had to be worshipped on certain days. So, Rome, Constantine of Rome, basically sees a sign in the sky and he, think it's, he thinks it's the cross. And so he thinks then he's supposed to be a Christian. And he supposedly converts to Christianity. But he doesn't really convert to Christianity. Had he converted to Christianity, he would have taken a sledgehammer and taken the statue of Mercury and beat it down. Like Josiah did. He would have taken the statue of Jupiter and destroyed it. He would have taken the statue of Diana and destroyed it. He would have destroyed all of those statues and all of those temples, and then outlawed the celebration of worshiping these gods on their certain days. There was what was called the Saturnalia. And it was a festival that worshipped Saturn, and they had a feast of Saturn on Saturn's day. In fact, it's where we get the word Saturday. We get the word Sunday from worshiping the sun, moon day from worshiping the moon. Uh, Woden's day, Wednesday is Woden's day. Thor's day is Thursday. Friday is Fris day, which was a goddess, and Saturday. So they had all these days worshiping all these gods. So when Constantine becomes this quote unquote Christian, he doesn't destroy the statues. He just scratches off the nameplate. Jupiter is not Jupiter anymore. It's St. Peter. Mercury is not Mercury anymore. Let's take that plate off and let's put a new one called St. Paul. That's what he did. So all of the days where they had celebrations and feasts to certain deities... Instead of honoring the deities by those names, they just honored them by calling them different saints' names. Like there is a St. Patrick's Day. So the Catholic Church took this guy, Patrick, and qualified to be a saint. Now, according to the Bible, all of us who are born again are saints. And I don't need a day named after me. Okay? But that, that's what the Catholic Church does. So they named all these saints and they gave them all a worship day. So you have St. Patrick's Day, you have St. Valentine's Day, which is in February. February what, 14th? That's St. Valentine's Day. And people who are not even Roman Catholic celebrate that day. People who are not Catholic nor Irish 
celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Okay? And the Bible tells us not to do that. That there isn't one day above another day where God is better, more powerful, easier to talk to, or that we can be closer to Him on a certain day than any other day. In fact, you've only got 365 days in a year. Well, there are more saints in the Catholic Church than there are days in the year. So they gave them all the rest of the saints who couldn't have their own day got November the 1st. All Saints Day. So October the 31st is All Saints Eve or All Hallows Eve. Which is where we get the word Halloween. Okay, it's still all pagan practice. That's what it is. Now, Galatians chapter 4. That being said, let's look at what the Bible says. This is what God was, was trying to convince Paul to convince the church. Because those Jewish non-Christian pretenders, after Paul left, moved into those churches and tried to convince them that they had to be uh, circumcised like Jews and they had to keep the Jewish Feast days like Passover and like Pentecost and like all this stuff. When it comes to Passover, do we have to celebrate Passover? No. Christ is our Passover. Every time we read the scriptures, we pray, we worship him. He's Passover. He's fulfilled it already. Okay, it's already done. So Galatians 4. Um, look in verse, well, I have up on the screen verse 9. But uh, uh, let's go back to verse 7 in Galatians 4. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which were, nature, by, which were by nature are no gods. In other words, and that's what he was saying, what I just told you. Back before you became a Christian, you served these other gods. And these other gods had these certain days and you worshipped them on their certain days. You paid homage to such and such God. You paid homage to Saturn on, on, on the Saturnalia feast. You paid homage to uh, Diana on the Feast of Diana. That's what you did. You were told to do that, that on this day you had to celebrate Diana, that you couldn't do it any other day. You had to do it this day. And that's what he's saying. It's what he's setting up. He said, verse 8 again, How be it, um, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Verse 9, but now... After that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. How turn ye again unto the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. Once you've been set free, why in the world would you want to go back into bondage again? I don't. I have been set, I've been made free. Free from the old sins, free from the old thoughts, free from the old ways, the old things. I've been made free from those things. I don't want to ever go back to that. And Paul's saying, why would you do that? Why would you let these people come in and convince you, now that Christ has made you free, why would you let these people come in and convince you that you had to worship, you had to go to church only on Saturday, you had to worship at all these feast days that God gave the Jews. You had to do all of these things. Why would you want to be back in bondage again is the question Paul is asking. And he says, and he says it in verse 10. Ye observe days and months and times and years. 
Look at my fingers up here. Days, months, times, years. Why that number? Turn to, uh, turn to Genesis chapter 1 and I'll show you why that number. It has everything to do with who is behind these days. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the, light, the day from the night. Let them be for count these things, for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. One, two, three, four. I've mentioned this. I, I talk about this every time. My dad was as good at planning things as anybody I've ever known. His dad was probably as good at it as he was, his mom and dad. Uh, my grandparents won in their city the best yard contest. They were in the local paper. They got a, they got a, a prize for the prettiest front yard because of the green thumb that my grandparents had. And they handed that down to my dad. And my dad said to me, you're not getting it because I kill everything. I kill, every, but my dad could grow, but you know what? He got a farmer's almanac. He got a farmer's almanac every year and he planted by the signs. Because that's what God says here. They shall be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And dad knew when to plant. He knew when, he knew my dad would call me and say, Mike, the crappie over at Lake Kincaid, Illinois, are spawning at a certain place tomorrow. Let's go over there and get them. And Al, he was right. I'd drive him over there to Lake Kincaid, and he knew, he knew exactly where to go in that lake on that day, and he knew they were spawning in that spot on that day. And boom, buddy, we was pulling them out of the lake as fast as we could pull them out. Okay, so I mean, they're there for a reason. But understand, these lights are also angels. Thus, they are gods. And people worship stars, don't they? What do we call the planets that circle the sun like the earth do? What do we, what do we name them? What have we named them? Did we name them Bob and Jim and Frank and Mary? And what did we name them? By the gods, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. These are all the names of gods because they believed them to be gods and they worshiped them. So astrology is the religion that says that the position of these gods in the sky determines what's going to happen to me during my day. They are the ones who are in control of my life. And when you say that you follow astrology, that means you worship and serve those gods. Those gods said is going to happen to you. You believe that that's exactly how your day is going to go. And if, and if you're told by an astrologer, well, since you're a Gemini, you cannot marry or you cannot be friends with a Taurus. And if you believe that, then you stay away from Geminis and Tauruses and you stay away from all that stuff. You do what those gods tell you to do. But anyway, back in Genesis, uh, let them be for uh, sign seasons for days and for years. Let them be for light from into the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so God made two great lights and the... The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, why do, you say, well, are these all these things evil? No, because Psalm 19 tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, and night unto night showeth no language, and there is no speech nor voice where their speech nor language where their voice is not heard. God put them up there to bring glory to God. The angels, the stars, honor God and worship and praise God, and they sing to him night and day. But we know that there are evil ones. 
who instead of worshiping God, they themselves demand to be worshiped by mankind. And they say that you must worship us on our days. You must do it how we tell you to do it. So back in Galatians, you observe uh, chapter four, chapter four, verse 10, you observe days and months and times and years. Now, what did God have to say about the observing of times? And what that means is tomorrow, let's say tomorrow or yesterday was Saturday or tomorrow is Monday. I must do this or I must worship this God on Monday or I must only do something on this particular day. What did God say about that? Well, Leviticus 19, verse 26, God said, you shall not eat anything with the blood. That means you don't drink blood, cow blood, deer blood. I never did. My dad never had this tradition where when I killed my first deer, he made me drink the blood. Thank you, dad. Thank you, dad. Thank you, dad. But God said, don't drink blood. Don't do it. Don't, I don't eat blood sausage. You would never get me to eat blood sausage. God said, don't do it. He said, you shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall you use enchantment nor observe times. So let me ask you this question. Can God only be prayed to on Sunday while you're at church? Of course not. God can be prayed to and worshipped Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, morning, noon, night. We know that Daniel prayed three times a day, but did, was there any law from God's law that said he had to pray three times a day? No, there was just a law against praying three times a day to any other God. Muslims, Muslims have a law that says if you're a Muslim, you must stop and pray five times a day, facing, bowing on your knees, head down to the ground. You must face Mecca five times a day and pray to their God or you're not worthy. And our God says, I don't make you do that. You can talk to me and you can come to me all day any day and at any time of the day you can call upon me there's freedom in that there's liberty in that in that i can call upon my god any time any day and there's no day there is no day when God can be heard better than he can on some other day. And I, I've, I've come close to mentioning his name and I won't do it. But somebody that came out of this church has started a new church where they only worship on Saturday. And I taught him better than that. And he won't listen. He's got in with a Jezebel who I saw it coming. I knew what was going to happen. They were going to get into the Hebrew roots, follow the Hebrew customs, do everything the way the Hebrews did. Because the idea is the Old Testament has a better understanding of who the Messiah is than the New Testament. That's not true. They couldn't even tell you in the Old Testament what the Messiah's name was. Because his name was never in the Old Testament. They couldn't identify the, old, the Messiah by the Old Testament. It took 
the four Gospels and the New Testament in order to be able to do that. But that's their mindset. The best way to understand the Messiah is to, do, is to see it through Jewish eyes. And yet the Jewish eyes looked right at the Messiah. And they said, Billy, we don't know who this guy is. What a shame, amen? Turn to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. I'm telling you, there are two religions in this world. Two and only two religions in this world. There is Bible-believing, born-again Christianity and witchcraft. And every religion in the world, every other religion in the world, including variations on Christianity, are nothing more than witchcraft. Because witchcraft is some form of law keeping. Whereby you must perform a law or follow a rule or you must ship on a certain day or facing in a certain direction or using certain words and certain names. Along with the Hebrew roots are what's called the sacred name people. And I had a pastor's wife come to me and say, hey, I've been reading this stuff, which that was her first problem. She'd been reading everybody else's books instead of reading her Bible. And she said, it looks to me like we're using the wrong names and I said, I looked into it. I'd never heard of it before I looked into it. And I said, this is witchcraft. To say that God, who came to us Gentiles, demands of us that we speak in the manner of the Jews in order to worship God? No, uh-uh. He left the Jews and came to us Gentiles. So it doesn't matter whether you're Italian or you're German or you're Dutch or you're English, or you're what, Spanish, or whatever, you call upon the name of the Lord in your language, and He's the same God. Amen. So Deuteronomy 18, verse 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or that useth divination. Or an observer of times. Do not be an observer of times. Don't think that God must be heard only on certain days. Or God is heard at bed. And there was a, there was a, one of these Hebrew roots guys used to be, used to have a big church in this area until they put him in prison for scamming old people out of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They threw him in prison over that. And he said this, his exact words were, I believe that when we observe times on Yahweh's calendar, it's his, his, his exact words, he's on YouTube, the video's still there. I believe when we observe times on Yahweh's calendars, he, he is, I can't remember what he said after that, he's, it's like he's better to us or we honor him better or he listens to us better or we get something better out of it when we do things on Yahweh's calendar, when we hold the Passover or when we hold the feast days or when we do this or do this on, the, on certain days, that God hears us better than He does at other times. And that is a lie. God said, they were observers of times when they were in the land and I want you to run them out. An observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. Sterling, what day was it when you got saved? Was it a Saturday? Was it a Sunday? Thursday? But you were in your house, right? Is it Sunday? Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. Okay. But it wasn't a Saturday. It wasn't the Sabbath day. He got saved on a different day that according to the Hebrew roots people, you can only worship God only on the Sabbath day. 
Well, Sterling got up and was praising God for saving him on a different day. God said, these things are an abomination unto him. And he said, uh, the, and for these abominations, verse 12, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. I mean, the Bible doesn't even tell us the birthday of Jesus Christ. You know why, I think? I think because some, some church, some religious system would demand that everybody must honor that certain day. And if you don't do it, you're not really a Christian. So somebody chose December 25th, but so what? So what if you want to honor and celebrate the birth of Christ on a different day? Who cares? Who cares? Amen? Uh, Romans chapter 14. Turn there. Romans 14. Verse 4. And this is, where we, this is where he gets into it. Who art thou, verse, Romans 14, verse 4, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. And I, I said that, I said that to people this morning. I said, well, I'm holding, somebody said, how you doing, Pastor Mike? I said, well, I'm holding up. And then I changed, my, I changed what I said and I said, no, God is holding me up. I'll say this and I won't say anything else, but since we prayed last Sunday morning, and I appreciate the outpour of love that everybody gave me, but since we prayed last Sunday morning, it got worse. It got worse. But I can tell you that I am standing firmer for the Lord Jesus and His gospel than I have ever have before. And it got worse. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So God is the one making us stand. And let's say that... Uh, Ross, let's use you for a minute. I always pick on the people who sit in this area, so... <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is what I do. You're the closest one. So let's say Ross has somebody he's been talking to about the Lord and all of a sudden they get saved. Ross, that wasn't you that saved that man. That was God through you using your testimony, your life to save that man. That way we don't get to take the credit for it. Credit goes to God. And I'm here standing today. More faithful. Standing stronger. But not because of me. Because of God through me. God is able to make him. So. Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. So let's say that there are some people who read that they read the Old Testament and they see that the Sabbath day is holy and they want to worship God. They want to have a service on the Sabbath day. I'm I'm not knocking that. I'm not I'm not necessarily knocking it. It is a holy day. The law is still right. Now, 
for me, what do I do for a living? What is my labor? What is my work? Huh? I'm a pastor. What am I doing right now? This, my labor is in the word. Okay. Can I do that on Saturday? Not really. Because my labor, my work, is what I'm doing today. What I've chosen, I used to come over here on Saturday and work. And still, every now and then, if I know something needs to be done, this is where I'll be. But I've, God's dealt with me about, Mike, take a day, take Saturday off. Don't go to the church. Don't do a bunch of stuff. I mean, if you want to study, study. But take that day off, Mike. That's your rest day. So if I were to demand that we have church every Saturday, I would be breaking the very law of the Sabbath day because the Sabbath day, the law said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou do all thy labor. And the seventh day ye shall what? Rest. So how do we keep the Sabbath day holy? Do we keep it by praising and worshiping God and having church service? No, we do it by resting because what did God do on the Sabbath day? He rested. And you know what I encourage you to do? Rest. Not work. Now some people, you know we have some people who must work. Their work schedule requires them. And I had somebody call me on this. They said Our, my work schedule requires me to work on Saturday. Can I have a different day as a Sabbath? I said yeah, why not? You're working six days. Take the seventh day and rest. It's the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. God knows your heart. Okay? And, and, and all this is about... Go back to verse 5 here. One man is one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth thanks. Some people don't want to eat meat. For whatever reason. But they say they want to do it for God. Or they don't want to eat pork. Then don't eat pork. And if you want to do it for the Lord's sake. Then do it for the Lord's sake. Amen. But some do because we know that by the word of God and thanksgiving in prayer sanctifies the food that we eat. So then let the one do that, do it unto the Lord and let the other who doesn't do it, do it as unto the Lord. But let God be their judge, not you and not the people on Facebook. He that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. And the idea is, see, by, by tradition, we've come on the first day of the week. Because seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, the Bible says. So we pick the first day of the week. It, it marks the, it commemorates the day that Christ resurrected from the dead. And it is the first day. So we're taking this first day and we're giving it wholly to God. And God then says, you can have the whole rest of the week. But today is my day. And you're here, not out of some commandment. Can you show me in the Bible where we are commanded to show up on church Sunday morning at 945? No, that's the point. We're not here because we have to be. We're here because we want to be. Amen. And nobody is our judge except God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I love you. Thank you, God, for teaching us, for giving us liberty. And God, I know, Father... That if I step out of your will, I know the rod waits on the other side of that. And your rod and your staff will comfort me. And it will bring me safely back into the fold. 
out of love. And Father, the things that I do, you are doing through me. The things that I do, Father, I do because I love you. And the Father, the things that you are doing in me and through me and with everybody around me, God, you're doing it because of love and not commandment. And God, I'd rather serve you out of a free heart than out of I ha something where it says I have to do it. Father, I'm, I'm not running out on my wife because I love my wife. Father, I'm not stealing money because I don't want money and I don't want to take from somebody else. God, I'm not lying to people because I want them to know that what I say is the truth. God, I do these things because I want to do these things. God, give us that liberty that we always want to do what's right. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you this